Good morning out there. So today's Sunday. This is going to be coming out a little bit late today, but I was lazy and I tired and sore from flying in trusses on a barn yesterday. So we're here now. So if you haven't noticed already, there's some things missing from the garage. Um, kind of did something last weekend and I wanted to update you guys because it's pretty big news for me. So I'm gonna flip you around here and let you see what I done did. There it is. 2024 street glide. Yep. I got rid of the fat boy. I got rid of the 19 street glide and got this bad boy in the whiskey fire. So pretty stoked. I mean, it's a night and day difference from the 19. Uh, I love it. I've been riding around in sport mode and Boy, how does that make that throttle snappy and twitchy and way too much fun. So, as you can tell, there's already been some things done to it. Fortunately, with uh, the redesign, a lot of things stayed the same, but a lot of things changed. So, we're just going to go over what I've done so far. And that's the floorboards. Got those back on for the wife. I don't like them, but she does. Got my tab pipes on there. Not the head pipe, so we've still got the catalytic converter in there. Uh, but that's mostly because Dino Jets, so far as I can tell, hasn't come out with any tunes for the 23 and a half and ups. Plus, I really do like having that powertrain warranty, so that's that's something that I'm gonna sit and think on. Did not do the air cleaner because again, tuner issues and the 90 degree heavy breather that I had doesn't fit so when the time comes i'll have to figure out something but we'll likely go with another heavy breather style so got the that sissy bar on there from ben Lari, along with the docking system that came off of the 19. so i was able to keep that and reuse it um, the tail lights and the license plate bracket that's all going to go away but i'm kind of hanging out till christmas time to see what custom dynamics comes out with Let's see here. Got the moose knuckle on there because you can't not. Oh, what else? Got my phone mount because that's a universal thing. And oh, my saddlebag organizer liners. I did go ahead and order the new liners, but they're still shipping. Haven't gotten those yet. Uh, went ahead and ordered the custom or not custom the color matched tour pack king tour pack for this for when the wife is with me other than that it won't be on here because i think we can all agree it's pretty ugly whether you get the king the chopped or the razor so that's just going to be part of her throne and i got the liners from advan black for that as well as the saddlebags so went ahead and ordered some things such as a windshield new tank badges because while those aren't bad i really liked the ones that i had on the 19. so i got those ordered and the liners ordered i am going to get a new seat of saddleman because we know me and i like my saddlemans because this isn't terrible but i just don't feel as locked in and and whatnot as the saddleman did and this is better than the previous generation but it's still not a winner for me but uh but anyway the windshield's here so I will probably go ahead and cut the camera. I'm gonna get the bike in on the chalk so I don't have to deal with a high side or a low side because I'm lazy and I have the option, so why not? But what we got is our windshield. So went ahead with the Clockworks eight inch flare. I was really on the fence about one of their colored ones, like maybe the red one, but I don't know, maybe in the future I'll give it a whirl, but for now, we're just gonna stick with that. But it's a real simple install just a t25 and a t27 in fact you can see it's already dirty i've been using it I, this showed up oh gosh wednesday thursday i think it was thursday showed up thursday went down to my garage at work and did the swap and i've already put the stock one back on because you know that's just what i do i like to redo work repeatedly Plus, I get to show you guys how simple one of these windshields is, and man, does it make a difference from that stock windshield. Uh, just really gets that air up and over because it 
without with that stock windshield just there blasts me right in the face and I'm not keen on being blasted in the face. So anyway, I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna bring the bike in, get it in the chalk and we'll start uh, redoing what I've already done once before. All right, so we're in the chalk and we're just gonna start getting at it, start in the beginning. So four T25s to get the windshield out. I'm just gonna lift it up and off, set it to the side and then we will start turning four T27 screws underneath and I'll show those to you once I get uh, this thing out of the way. So one sec. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just lift up and off. There we go. I'm gonna bring that over to the workbench, set it down. Almost forgot to mention, Clockworks does send it with these really nice full color directions that are just, makes it super simple. I appreciate the color. They don't have to do that, but they do and I like it. So, yeah, kind of idiot proof, which is great for me because that's kind of what I need. All right, so coming over, here's those T27s I was talking about, you know, either side. So pull those, and then this whole centerpiece here is just gonna lift up and off. We'll turn it over, and there'll be a couple of other screws underneath, which I believe are also 20, uh, T25s. So let's go ahead and get this off or these off here, or the screws, and I will show you the ones underneath that I'm talking about real quick. Okay, so those are out. I'm just gonna grab, lift, separate. The directions warn you about a little rubber gasket. I'm not sure what gasket they're referencing because I don't see one in here, but that doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. But, so we're just gonna set that down upside down, you know, because we got the, the blocks right there. So there's the T25 screw, I think. Yeah, T25, one here, one here. I'll pull those and it'll release these mounting blocks. And I'll use the ones that Clockworks sent with the original hardware. And we'll get those mounted up here and take it back to the bike. So, so far, it's, it, it really is that easy. So uh, I'm probably two minutes in. So I'm gonna keep trucking along and get back to you. All right, so those blocks are off. We're going back to the bike. I'll just set that in. And these blocks that Clockworks makes are labeled L and R. And those letters do go at the bottom of the windshield when you're putting them on. But it's really simple, but L and R is as you're sitting on the bike, not as you're looking at it. And there are these little indexing nubbins here that just sit right in that hole, just like that. Now I'll take my original hardware, the T25s, uh, sorry, correct me, the T27s, run those in here, and then we're just about ready to put the windshield back on. So let me get those screws, these ones here, and that on there, and then we'll discuss these and that. So, all right, so real quick and simple, those are in. Now they do give you some torque specs on all of all of these screws. I didn't torque anything, I just kind of got them snug and then gave them a little bit more of a turn to lock them in. There was no Loctite on them. I don't want to put Loctite on them because it just, just threads into a, a brass ferrule that's, you know, pressure fit into plastic and I don't want to run the risk of stripping out that plastic. So just, you know, run it down till it touches a little bit more, call it done. And you, you can risk the torque wrench, but I'm not gonna, as we all saw what happened to torquing a air cleaner on that. So now we'll go ahead and grab the windshield. Bike's gotta be washed anyway, so I'm not too worried about the fingerprints this time. So have the little notches, they just slide into the grooves on the holder, just like that and our holes line up. So what we'll do now is we'll grab these little covers that they provide along with reusing the T25 hardware. And just see if I can do this without dropping a screw. There we go. Oh, hey, you're not even seeing what I'm seeing. My bad. All right. So I'll just run those down. I'll get that one on and we'll be done. 
Okay, that's it. It really was that simple. I mean, the first time I did this, it took me maybe 10 minutes just because I was thoroughly reading the directions because new bike, I want to get it right and not damage an expensive freaking windshield. So uh, the previous Clockworks windshield that I had on the Street Glide was, oh, I don't know, we're going to call it 200 to 220 bucks. These ones for the new ones at the moment are only available in eight inch dark smoke and they are about 250, I believe. I don't have any any codes for them because they don't know that I exist. Uh, but if anybody has, has this uh, whiskey fire color and you went with one of their red windshields, uh, their color flare, I think is what they call it. Dude, let me know. I would love to see some pictures of that because oh, I was I was so on the fence about doing that windshield and obviously I didn't uh, but now I'm kind of wondering how it would look so I said if you've done it and you've got a picture of it send it to me I mean drop it in the comment section email it to me uh, at a buffalo's garage at gmail and because I would just, I would love to see you did I did I make the wrong choice I normally do but a couple of things you probably may not have noticed yet is we're back to the stock wheels because as much as I love those coastal motos, this is a TPMS bike. The 19 wasn't. And in order to make all of that switch happen, and this is straight from coastal moto, I called them. Uh, Harley would have to drill into one of the spokes, you know, tap it. Then they could run their TPMS sensor in and uh, do all of that. Not to mention having to swap out the, the axle bearings and a couple of other things. And I just wasn't willing to pay for all that labor. So who knows, maybe I'll still get those same wheels on this bike, but I'll get them as a TPMS wheel this time. I don't know, I've, I'm really enjoying how this bike handles. One, because it's a redesign, it's lighter and all that other stuff, but the stock wheels, I feel like the bike handled better with the stock 1619 combo versus the 1821 that I had. As soon as I did that, it, I felt like it, it changed the way the bike handled for the worse. You know, maybe that's in my head, but that's that's just what I noticed. So the next thing's coming, like I said, it's gonna be the seat. I am gonna go a different route with this bike as opposed to the last one. Uh, what I wanna do ooh, is go with like an SP Concepts two into one shorty as opposed to the tabs, as much as I love the tabs. Uh, I just like that. I want to try something new, something different. You know, I, I went, you all saw what I did with the last one. I want to go with something a little bit sportier here, a little bit more performance oriented without making yet another performance bagger. Uh, the other thing I want to do is with the bars, we know I had the 10 inch meat hooks from Dominator. I really want to try to find like a T-bar setup. And I know, I know it, it's a street glide. It's not easy or conducive. Some people hate the look but I've been doing a fair amount of club riding lately and all of those guys are running T-bars on their bikes. So I figured it could be worth looking into. Granted, they all ro ride road glides or low riders and that's probably also for a good reason. But I rode a road glide. I just, I like the familiarity of this, the, the compact feeling of this because from behind that fairing on the road glide, it just feels so bulbous to me. But you know, I don't know, maybe the next bike will be a roguelite. I don't know. But I've seen a couple of options, you know, like Kraus and I think LA Chopper and some others, but that involves either losing or losing access to or the entire existence of this drawer and most of this all lower fairing inside, which I don't want to do. I want to keep with that, that OE look. And then the other one I have found, uh, uh, they're uh, Vindicta makes them and another company that's saluting me at the moment they're called essentially hoopties where they just come out they loop up to above the screen and then they tee up and out from there so you still have functionality of your drawer and your fork lock and your screen and I just don't know yet how I feel about that look so if anybody has any ideas as to what other options I might have that I haven't discovered, let me know, you know, do those hoopty style bars if you've tried them, 
uh, really give you the same feel as a traditional T-Bar or is it a gimmick? You know, am I stupid for wanting to maybe try T-Bars on this? Should I stick with, you know, maybe 12 inch apes this time around? I don't know, it's just, I did what I did before. I ran that for several years. I really wanna try something different. The grips aren't terrible, but I'm probably gonna go back to the grips that I had on the 19. Uh, as everybody said, the stereo sucks, but it is what it is. You know, I'm not too worried about upgrading that. Uh, and I know what I am going to do is I'm going to remove this black plastic cover and expose more of this paint. I'm probably gonna do that as soon as I uh, shut down the camera. So that's all I have, you know, new shiny toy. I'm super excited. I really love how this thing handles. Uh, you know, obviously we kept the Springer, so Fat Boy and the, and the 19 Street Glide are gone. I got so much more room in the garage and the wife is happier and that's always a win. So uh, questions, comments, concerns, as always, you know, let me know. Uh, if you would, you know, hit that subscribe button, you know, toss me a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, and I love to hear from you guys. As always, we'll catch you later. See ya.